There are so many different types of battery chemistry now, guys. I'll be talking about battery chemistries at the EV show in Sydney. So if you want to hear about all these different battery chemistries, I mean, literally, there is more than 30 LFP batteries. <laughs> there is literally more than 10 types of advanced new LFP batteries just to consider. And they're all a little bit different to each other, different structures, etc. This industry is going mental. The advancement of technology, the speed of advancement, and I haven't even talked about sodium batteries, is crazy. Now, American energy storage technology newcomer Form Energy says it has received funding to build a groundbreaking 85 megawatt slash 8.5 gigawatt hour iron air multi-day, I mean, what? Multi-day battery, which will be capable of up to 100 hours of storage and will be the world's biggest battery once built. 8.5 gigawatt hours, guys. This isn't just the biggest battery in the world. This is the biggest, 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 biggest battery in the world because it's <laughs> it's like how many orders of magnitude bigger than the second biggest battery in the world? I don't even know how to work this out exactly because it's a bit confusing, but I can tell you it's it's enormous. It's incredible. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Speaking of great to have you with us, if you'd like to be a YouTube member, you do get access to some videos that aren't on the regular channel. And of course, you support the channel. So I really appreciate you guys who are YouTube members. The US Department of Energy. Last week announced US $390 million of funding for the Power Up New England projects, which will unlock a 4.8 gigawatts or a total of 4.8 gigawatts of additional offshore wind and innovative battery energy storage systems in the local grid to boost resilience and optimize delivery of renewable energy. So to stop curtailing, um, I hate the word curtailing because it doesn't really justify. You think about it right. I mean, when people hear that this happens, when people find out how much energy is being wasted by countries, by Australia, by Germany, by America, renewable energy, how much of it's being curtailed or just wasted, completely um, unused, destroyed, essentially. They're pretty shocked. Big battery projects like this, they won't eliminate curtailment, but pretty close, right? Eventually, curtailment will be a thing. We go, oh, remember back in the remember back in the, the 2020s when we used to waste so much billions of dollars worth of electricity every day? Remember then, back then, weren't we crazy to do that? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't crazy because battery storage was... Uh, in its infancy, you know, it's not anymore, to be honest, but in the early 2020s, it was much more expensive. Tesla, for example, you want to buy a Tesla Megapack battery, it's really about, it's probably less than half the price because they're a bit cheaper today than what they were five years ago, a bit, probably 20 to 30% cheaper, but they'll last more than twice as long because they're now using a much better lithium ion phosphate batteries. They have better architecture, they have better software that makes the batteries last longer. You're going to get more than twice as many charges out of those batteries. So the industry has moved very, very fast. But what about this new battery? I mean, guys, if you watch this channel regularly, you know I've talked about iron air batteries, but I never predicted and never thought that the biggest battery in the world would be an iron air battery. This is quite a surprise to me. Part of the Power Up New England project and easily the most exciting, says reneweconomy.com.au, I agree with you guys as always, is the 85 megawatt, 8,500 megawatt hour iron air battery system to be built on the site of a former paper mill in rural Maine. Of all places, rural Maine. I've actually been there on a train and the, there wasn't much there, but there'll be the biggest battery in the world there. Now, Form Energy will receive US $147 million to build the battery using its novel iron air battery technology, which is based on the principle of reversible rusting. The battery apparently charges by the application of an electrical current, which converts rust back to iron, in turn breathing out oxygen. To discharge, the battery breathes in oxygen from the air and converts the iron metal to rust. Who would have thought this would be an efficient form of energy storage? It's quite remarkable, isn't it, what's happening now with artificial intelligence and um, incredible fast co computation speeds. They're totally re basically revamping the entire world when it comes to technology. At about the size of a side-by-side -side washer and dryer, 
This contains a stack of approximately 51 meter tall cells. Each individual battery module includes the iron and air electrodes that enable the electrochemical reactions to store and discharge electricity. So if each module is only one, about one meter high, that got me to thinking, well, could these be used as like a, a power wall, you know, Tesla power wall battery? Could you get one like that? I did a little bit of research and it doesn't look like that would really work, but that may, be, may not be the case. Who knows what will happen in a few years time. These modules apparently are grouped together allowing for modular and scalable megawatt scale power blocks. Former Energy says its iron air battery systems can be deployed anywhere to meet utility scale energy needs. And while they are able to complement the function of traditional lithium ion batteries, they also store energy at less than one tenth the cost of lithium ion batteries. At this point, my bullshit meter is starting to go bing, 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 bing. And <laughs> it's kind of started to bit of a red alert here, guys. One tenth the cost of current lithium ion battery technology. Is that legitimate? That makes me go, whoa, hang on a minute, red flag. You know, guys, something happens in life. You see someone, they might have purple hair or whatever it is, whatever your red flags are. This is one of my red flags. One tenth the cost. If it was that cheap, this blows sodium ion batteries out of the water. It makes sodium look incredibly expensive. I'm very skeptical that these claims are true. One tenth the cost would just, I mean, realistically, if any country saw that this battery is being deployed at one tenth the cost of what they're paying for lithium ion battery, lithium ion phosphate battery energy storage, which is at 95% of the world's energy storage, that's what it is right now. If they saw that, they'd just cancel their contracts immediately, surely, if that was true. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that has me concerned. Anyhow, the batteries are particularly safe. There's no risk of thermal runaway whatsoever, apparently, and they don't use any heavy metals. They obviously don't use lithium. So they're apparently highly recyclable. One of the big advantages of iron air batteries after, in the videos that I've talked about this technology is that they're meant to last much longer than even lithium ion phosphate batteries or even sodium ion batteries. In theory, uh, modern sodium ion batteries, or at least the ones made by the new the battery company in America, which makes uh, gigawatt scale sodium ion batteries, they are meant to last for more than 50 years. So realistically, basically, this could last even longer than that. So you put in the investment for a battery, which apparently costs one tenth the price of current lithium batteries, and you end up with a battery that lasts for 50, 60, 70 years. That just seems, it does seem too good to be true. Now, I hope it's not, because if it's not, wow. Talk about global revolution. This would completely change the entire planet within a very short space of time. You'd have obviously rivals popping up in China within months saying, wow, this technology is amazing. It's gonna change the world. Now, if it is the case, that will happen. You can bet it will. However, Form Energy says its iron air battery will deliver multi-day storage duration necessary to make renewable energy sources reliable anywhere in the world. There is no current multi-day energy storage in lithium ion phosphate battery, uh, battery for grids, there's nothing. As far as I can tell, there is no battery that lasts longer than about 12 hours, multi-day energy storage. This is the most game-changing product I've ever seen based on its claims. They're all claims at this point. Hopefully they're all legitimate claims and they're all true because if they are, this gives you guys in America a, well, there's nothing in China like this. There's nothing. <laughs> There's some amazing battery technology. I talk about it all the time with them. Hundreds of videos on all the different battery battery chemistries and all the different new batteries coming out. Aegis short blade battery, uh, the CATL Shenzhen battery, the Quillin 2.0 battery, BYD's new blade battery version 2.0, new sodium batteries coming out of American companies. There's an LFP battery, very, very high energy density. Get, uh, what about um, Goshon High Tech? Apparently they have a lithium ion phosphate battery with 235 watts what hours per kilogram of energy density, but there's nothing at this level with so-called one-tenth of the cost. Now, even if that's not the case, even if it's only one-fifth of the cost, it still will just put everyone else out of business. I mean, Tesla's mega pack battery business would be in huge trouble if this actually is, if they're able to produce these at gigawatt scale, Tesla would be out of business within only a couple of years. Let's be frank, let's be honest. I mean, not Tesla as a company, but Tesla's energy storage division, why would you use it? You, you know, yeah, sure. Your software, your Tesla battery mega packs is amazing. And your grid integration is incredible. That's part of the, the big Tesla appeal. But I'm sure you can figure that out, right? Invest enough money, you can figure that out. Especially 
if your cost is 20% versus your rivals. So let's wait and see what happens in that space. Here's what the company actually said. We are pleased to be selected by the US Department of Energy for the Power Up New England initiative to deploy 85 megawatt slash 8,500 megawatt hours multi-day battery system, which marks a significant milestone on multiple fronts. Located at the site of a former paper mill in rural Maine, this iron air battery system will have the most energy capacity of any battery system announced yet in the world. The project will ensure a more reliable, clean and affordable grid in New England by reducing transmission congestion and making valuable wind energy resources available when and where they are needed. Now, there is one downside to this battery. It can't deploy energy fast enough. That's a, clearly a significant downside. Now, as you can see here by the numbers, guys, 85 megawatts, that's the amount of power it can send out. But there's batteries around the world that can send out way more than that. We're talking, you know, 10 times more power at any one point in time. So whilst this is a multi-day battery energy storage system, which is amazing, if you have a, a grid which needs a lot of power all at once, so let's say everyone's coming home and they're going, well, we're going to turn on our air conditioners now, we're going to turn on plug our EVs in now if, if they weren't plugged in or whatever, you might need to plug those in because you've driven home. That's going to be a problem for a battery like this. When I say a problem, I mean 85 megawatts is still quite a lot of power, but it's nothing compared to some of the big batteries that can deploy 800 to 1000 uh, megawatts at once. So that's the downside, the amount of electricity you can send into the grid at any one point in time. You would need a few of these batteries if you have that scenario, this battery is perfect for multi-days, right? Where you have a scenario where, okay, maybe you don't have any wind and solar for multi-days. The question is, do you even need that? Tony Sieber thinks you don't. Tony Sieber, in fact, is very, very particular on this. He says, there is no need for multi-day battery storage. In most cases, I think he's right. In somewhere like maybe Russia or Mongolia, uh, you know, maybe Northern parts of the world where it's very cold, Alaska, you may need this battery. But in most places around the world, the sun will shine, the wind will blow, and you will be able to recharge your mega batteries. Um, so that's the one downside. But everything else is incredibly positive. Everything else makes it better. Because to be honest, just build 10 of these. If it's one tenth the price, build 10 of these, and then you've got 850 megawatts right there with the 10. Plus you've got multi-day storage. You've got all these benefits of it lasting longer. Uh, yeah. Let's wait and see what happens with this one. But guys, let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this. Am I, am I missing something? Have you been an engineer working on a project like this? You've had some experience and there's something that the press, the media are missing because I feel like there must be. I feel like this is maybe too good to be true.